wonderful people. And thank you for listening every Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday. And who are listening at the replay, 11 o'clock every day? Thanks for listening. I hope I have been, I've been a, 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 of some help educating you people on what is happening in this land, this beautiful country of ours with our resources. I have begun this program and I have stuck with that. I am dealing with our pockets, our wardrobe, our bank, bank books, our bank accounts. So with that, I want to begin tonight's uh, presentation with you people. So Josh, if you'll sit with me. Yes, sir. And bear with me and listen with me so you can get some picture of, of what I, I'll be telling the nation. Well, I'll be very happy. Joshua, this country called Guyana, according to the politicians, is a seven-day wonder. Break a huge story, and seven days after, all Guyana forget about it, and life goes on. But let me say this to the politicians. It may be so for most of the population, but for some people like myself, Glenn Lal, we will go to our graves with some of the unforgivable things they did to this nation and its people. That one-sided oil deal Trotman sign say that he was instructed and directed to sign it. Hmm. The giveaway of the entire Stabbrook block to ExxonMobil. The Kaicho and Kanji oil blocks. Yes. The way they give it away. And the way they are running my thing. It's your thing. And no our future and just give it away. Miss Harris, yeah. growing up in Wakenham, I used to hear my mommy say, this place got a lot of two-faced people. And I used to ask her, what is two-faced, mama? She used to tell me, <laughs> when you grow up, you're going to learn. Well, it's only yesterday I learned the meaning of two-faced. Someone gives you two versions of the same story. It's like President Ali. Tell ex-president Granger, Glenn Lyle is a good man. And then tell the vice president, Jack Dale, Glenn Lyle is the worst human being on earth. Mm -hmm. When you got people, Ms. Harris, mm -hmm. who cuss people for doing something wrong, and then them turn around and do the same wrong, worse. What do you call them kind of people like? Mm. Hmm? <laughs> Hypocrite? That's right. That's a cheat? A liar? A <laughs> Take it over. Well, brothers and sisters, I don't know the answer to that. To that. You guys got to help me with that answer. And you can call the phone when I finish the presentation. I will play a tape of ex-president Jack Dale when he was the opposition leader in 2018. What he accused the coalition government of, of doing as compared to what he is doing presently. He made some very important points and gives some beautiful recommendations and advice during his presentation. 
that made me believe this is the smartest man on earth where business is concerned and he is the right man to run this oil industry. Please listen to him carefully. I admire and applaud the people who invented today's technology. You know why, Miss Harris? Mm. <laughs> because we can go back in time and find important conversations that we may have forgotten with certain people to either learn, clear up, or remind us of what they say and how they would have said it. Hmm. What you're about to listen to, uncle, is not what Glenn Lal said. It's what Vice President Jack Dale said. Hmm. <laughs> that is what you will be listening to. Don't blame Glenn Lal for being factual. Don't accuse Glenn Lal of embarrassing and speaking the truth about these leaders. You will hear for yourself how Jack Dale cost on the coalition government <coughs> for doing the wrong things and then turn around and doing the same thing 50 times worse than the people he cost down. What you're about to, to listen, uncle and auntie, <laughs> oh boy, Guyanese, Guyanese people have to come to grips with themselves, with what is taking place in this land. Yes, you have to. Joshua, yes, sir. I just want the people to sit back, you know, and relax. They need to understand what's playing out in this country with a trillion dollar oil business listen to him yourself could I'll, I'll play the entire tape right now right Joshua yes, sir. I'll play the entire tape now and I will break it down I'll play it piece by piece and then deal with it so could you please play that tape now for me yeah you, you know what would surprise me that Exxon Mobil said we open to the audit and our government Put the figure in the contract without doing that first. Again, it comes back to the incompetence of our government. Imagine the people saying, you can audit. So the government should have said, okay, we will we'll get a form to do this um, at your cost, too, at the cost of the company. And we'll get a form, we'll hire the form, we'll do it. And whatever the figure is, we'll put that figure, the audited figure in the, in the agreement. Easily, that could be done because they, they had no pushback from Exxon Mobil, but they didn't even raise it. They just people said <coughs> for 60 million, Rockman said, Put it in there, put it in. What, what, I think it should. I think you can't, you can't agree to any figure unless you have audit. Enough questions have been raised about whether those are legitimate expenditures, etc. Expenditure. And, and therefore, we, we have to, before those are accepted, uh, they, there has to be an audit. And ExxonMobil said they're not opposed to the audit. So we should just get along with it. They already made a mistake, a huge fundamental mistake by putting it, agreeing to it in the contract. A figure that is unaudited, but this is, this is the pattern. I'm sorry to be silly, but it's a no. opposition to any... No, no, I can't, we can't, because, because the company said they're not unwilling to have the audits done. All we have to do is ask our own co government to pursue this. That, you, you understand what I'm saying? I, we can't take everything to Parliament. We just... No, he will say the PPP caused that too. You know, like that's a new thing. The PPP caused him not to audit the figure and put it in the contract. This is the every day. Look at the statement that Trotman Ministry, after I said, release the, release the list. 
And he put, his ministry put out a long statement that they have been keeping the Guyanese public informed. And this has been the most secretive government about that contract. And he, with a straight face, said that. How do you deal with, with someone like that? I had to point out eight or nine things in a response to him where they lied to the Guyanese public about the same contract. And he said, oh, Jack, I don't know what Jack they were talking about. We've been keeping the Guyanese public informed about all these matters. So that is the mindset they have. I, I wish that they will do, do it. Do it. It has to be done. We will do it. This force, it was inherited, given that, uh, that the monies were spent um, for people. Yes. yes. Yeah. My, my question is, <coughs> um, does your government, um, is your party, the, the figures that were put, was this policy, if I say that to you, because I'll be just like the Trotman, and because you have to submit the invoices. You have to say, here is a contract for the, the rig. The government of Ghana then says, yes, we can verify that. This costs 30 million US dollars. Then the next question should be, was this competitively sourced? Could we have gotten it for $20 million? Because the going rate at that time was $20 million. Then was it a, 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 a company that is related to, see, the, the oil company? Because if it's a related company, the cost could be inflated that did the rigging, um, the drilling, uh, drilling. These are questions for everything that that comes up, that the expenditure that is made by the company. At the end of the day, you aggregate all of those and you come up with a figure. And you say, yes, this, uh, this is real. Because we've gone through it. We've asked the right question. We've gotten the answers. That is how a government should operate. It has to be done and we will do it. So said Vice President Jack Deo when he was the opposition in 2018. Miss Harris, I love technology. Yes, I love modern technology. I am sure some of these some of these corrupt and incompetent leaders out there hate those inventors of today's new technology. With a passion. Yes, with a passion. <laughs> that beautiful voice advice and buse dung, uncle, came from Jack Day at a press conference, like I said, in 2018. He said he was surprised there was no fight from ExxonMobil to do the audit. They were ready for the audit and were willing to accept whatever figure the audit company arrived at. You guys heard him. You heard him say the incompetent coalition government did not hire an audit firm to do the verification of the 460 million U.S. Although ExxonMobil said the bill to do the audit will be taken care of by the company. We incompetent government accepted the 460 billion thrown at us and we have to pay it as is. Mm -hmm. And that stands on to now. That's his word. He's, he, he is correct what he said there. Mm -hmm. Right? How he views down there. That was very beautiful, auntie. That is the man who understands how to run a business. You have to verify spendings with your partner. Yes, you have to. You see how smart this man is, Gregory? Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then he went on to say, you can't agree to any figure people throw at you unless you audit. 
verify or check it to see if it's correct. His words, you know, Gregory, not mine. The opposition leader back in 2018 said, enough questions have been raised about the legitimate cost and expenditures. And therefore, before we accept the bills, any bills, there must be an audit. Especially when ExxonMobil say they are not opposed to it. The coalition should have done the audit. But they didn't. <laughs> he said they made a mistake. A huge fundamental mistake by accepting the costs as is. You hear that man? Mm -hmm. eh? Beautiful, eh? Come 2020. Come 2020, Uncle and Auntie, the PPP get in office. And he was put in charge of the entire oil industry. He did not audit, verify, or check Lisa one <coughs> and two oil field bills, which was almost nine billion American dollars. He didn't. What he said? You remember, Gregory? Oh, so I am so disappointed that we couldn't find people. To do the audit and time run out on us. So what happened, Guyana? We are saddled with that nine billion American dollar in bills to be paid. That money, uncle and auntie, is more than three years of this country's budget. Three years now on. He didn't do what he accused the coalition of not doing. You love this man, eh? You gotta love this man. You gotta love this man. He didn't do what he cost down the coalition government with just 460 million. He didn't do that, the, the verification and audit for 9 billion American dollars. Not 460, you know. Not 460, my friend. 18. 19 times the money of that 460, he did not do a, a verification on. Yesterday, a Borbishan pensioner called me and said, Brother Glenn, I went to Skeldon Post Office to collect my pension. And they tell me they don't have money. <laughs> Uncle, the money Guyana could have saved had we done a proper verification and audit of that nine billion in Lisa one and Lisa two alone, hmm, could have tripled the public servant's salary in this country, triple the pensioners' package, and still give every household big big money every month a fat check they should have been collecting. That is nine billion American dollars. Barrett Jack, they will just accept as is. That has to come out from our little Kanchi profit. Yes, the little Kanchi oil profit that got to come out of. Hmm. So you're going to get a smaller Kanchi profit down the road. Four years ago, Almost to this date, he abused down the coalition for not auditing $460 million. Now, one and a half years done, Uncle Gregory. One and a half years done. A few months only left for him to audit another nine billion American dollar payara bills. Time is running out on us. Like a speeding minibus, uncle. Like I said, only a few months left to check and verify that too. And that audit has not even begun. <laughs> How do you like that one? I put in my life on the line that Vice President Jack Dale 
is purposely allowing time to run out on this other nine billion dollar or he will find a cranky looking incompetent company for run through the books and say everything is correct or you gonna say again we can't find people to audit so Guyana will have to accept another three-year budget money give away to Exxon Mobil and paying interest on all that money like a lamb being dragged to the slaughterhouse that's what this man is doing to this country yes that's his intention and I want anybody to prove me wrong you heard him in his own words an audit must be done to make sure it's legitimate bills and prices thrown at us by ExxonMobil must and should be audited he said so he also said that you have to and must audit these things why are we still waiting on this third oil field nine billion dollar in bills mr jagdale we agree why are we waiting on these things let me play back a piece of what he just said so you get it clear could you play it for me play it for another piece no no i can't we can't because because the company said they're not unwilling to have the audits done all we have to do is ask our own co government to pursue this that you you understand what i'm saying i we can't take everything to parliament we just no, he will say the PPP caused that too. You know, like that's a new thing. The PPP caused him not to audit the figure and put it in the contract. <laughs> oh my gosh. You can't, we can't bring that parliament. We can get accused. PPP caused that to happen. <laughs> Gregory, a caller said, Glenn, you're embarrassing these leaders on this radio program. I said to him, I am not embarrassing them, brother. I'm just exposing their lies, deception, two-face, and trickery so that all of you can understand and play your role in calling on them to do what is right for the benefit of every single Guyanese. That's what I said to him. He said... He said, not everything you got to go to Parliament for. You hear him, right? Mm -hmm. Jack Dave said, not everything you got to go to Parliament for. You call on the government to do it. Well, hear what, Uncle? We at the Kaicho News <laughs> have been doing this for quite a while now with not a single response from him or from Vikram Bharat, the minister of the isle. You guys remember how many questions we sent to them about the oil sector. Just last week, my reporter asked him about a parallel review. The report, the review report, Monday I talked about that, in which he said he never promised to release the report. But if President Ali and Vikram Bharat promised, then we should release it. <laughs> and he's accusing the coalition of being secretive. You hear that? <laughs> Joshua, could you play another piece that the people hear, man? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at the statement that Trotman Ministry, after I said, release the, release the list. And he put, his ministry put out a long statement that they have been keeping the Guyanese public informed. And this has been the most secretive government about that contract. And he, with a straight face, said that. How do you deal with, with someone like that? I had to point out eight or nine things 
in a response to him where they lied to the Guyanese public about the same contract. And he said, oh, ja I don't know what Jack you're talking about. We've been keeping the Guyanese public informed about all these matters. So that is the mindset they have. I, I wish that they will do, do it. Do it. <laughs> I wish. I wish they can do it. Do it. <laughs> he accused the people of being secretive. <laughs> Jack Deer said, Jack Deer said, look at the long statement, statement Trapman Ministry put out saying that they have been keeping the Guyanese public informed. <laughs> Man, these are things I shouldn't be explaining. He was very clear there. Exactly. And Ms. Harris? Well, let me still explain, put it my way, man. He went on to say how he raised about eight or nine things where the coalition lied to the Guyanese public about the contract. And Trapman said, with a straight face, he don't know what Jack Dale is talking about. <laughs> how they have been keeping the Guyanese public informed about all these matters. Then Jack Dale responded by saying that the coalition was the most secretive government about the contract and wants to know how you deal with something like that. <laughs> Sometimes I ask that question a million times, you know. When you listen to these people, how do you put up with them? How do you take them? How do you handle them? You know? This is not two-faced, man. This is downright trickery and deceptive what is going on in this land. All on purpose. Now, what is he doing? How is he any different from what the coalition were doing? Every day the Kaicho News asking him and his government, 89 and 99 things about the oil industry. Not 8 and 9. And he ducking and diving like duck. Running around, avoiding the press. Telling the reporters they are here to answer questions only from the citizens and not reporters. Where is the review reports, Mr. Jagdeo? I am asking this on national radio. Where is the local content reports that you just cost Stratman about? Where are those reports? Uh, Mr. Jagdeo? Where is the daily or monthly oil production report, Mr. Jagdeo? Auntie and uncle. The same thing he accusing Trotman and the coalition of doing, he is doing 50 trillion times worse today. And I say 50 trillion times, uncle, because Trotman them used to release the local content reports. So we know how much the oil people spending in Guyana and where they're spending money. And who is getting the contracts in the oil sector? Whether local brown, black, and purple people or the white men them getting the contracts? All those things used to be. Used to be in the open. The coalition government used to release those reports. So don't buy what this man is telling you. The coalition who Jagdo accused of being secretive, uncle, like I said, uh, used to release monthly production report. So all of Guyana can know how much oil pumping out there every day. You hear me, Gregory? Mm -hmm. They used to do it. Why you are not releasing the reports for us to see who are getting the contracts, Jagdo? Why the Guyanese people can't see and know who really making money in this country from the oil? And most importantly, now that we're pumping more oil, 
why you don't want the people of this country to know how much oil is coming up every day out there? Huh? Why we don't know the cost per barrel? How come? Why we don't know the price they're selling the oil? Yes. The price they're selling the oil for before sharing profits. Why, bro? Why Guyanese people doesn't know this? Hmm? You and Exxon Mobil own the oil out there? Are you in partnership with Exxon Mobil? Protecting their interests? Or there is something else going on that we, the Guyanese people, don't know about? Come out and tell the nation. Release the reports. Audit the books. Tell us the costs. So that Guyana can know what's going on with their oil wealth, Mr. Jack Dale. Is that too much to ask for, Mr. Gregory? No. Mr. Joshua? No, sir. Miss Harris? No. Any one of the Guyanese people? I am asking that question. Is that too much to ask for, man? Huh? These are such. Years now, international oil exports, we have carried many, many stories on this thing, have been asking that simple question, a simple, simple question. What is the method or the formula? ExxonMobil using to calculate the profits. You hear me? Mm -hmm. To this day, not a single soul telling us anything. Why is this question not being answered, Mr. Jagdeo? Why is this a secret too? Why the people of this country can't know how ExxonMobil doing the maths for divide we profit? Yeah, man? Huh? Isn't what how simple this thing is? Simple. Why we can know how Exxon Mobil are doing maths? You know the price them the cars for per barrel and how much they must sell the oil for? How much do they must take out to transportation? And how they must, what and what they must take out so that we know how they share in this profit? Huh? You see how simple this thing is? I hope you guys see. What is going on in this country with the all wealth? And he keep approving oil fields upon oil fields and not correcting the mistakes. What Trotman them did by allowing Exxon, Exxon not to pay taxes. Eh? Hmm? Uncle, every oil field, every oil project that should have been the number one change. We don't have to continue with a contract deal in every oil field, man. Mm -hmm. And you need to understand that. We don't have to. Every other one, we can demand, not ask or beg for that, man. You understand that? Clearly. Every single oil project come up. We didn't have a bag for that. We can demand, say, well, from now on, every barrel that come out, out of this oil field, Exxon Mobil, <coughs> excuse me, will be paying taxes on every barrel. What is so, why he's not doing this thing? Huh? And you keep approving more and more. I think after this program, or maybe I'll do one more Friday and call it a day. Why are we sitting back allowing this man to keep approving oil fields upon oil fields upon oil fields and not getting a single cent more from them knowing that we get con? He himself says we get a con on the oil contracts. Why is he keep approving these things? We get con with the taxes. I have to end up going to the court for challenge them. Exxon Mobil taking our oil money to hire senior counsel to fight against me. Huh? 
What's going on in this land, brothers and sisters? How much more are we going to sit back and take? When every project, like I said, you can mint so much money out of. Come on, man. Pension are going to, to collect their pension and you don't have money to give them. Public servants can't pay rent. They rent with the salary they're collecting. Policemen and women, nurses, were looking after the sick. Going home can't, with a salary that can't even pay light like bill. The fifth aisle field, uncle and auntie, they just announced it. It's another $10 billion and we will not get any changes. Why, brothers? Why, sisters? Why, man? Come on. Glenn Lal can only do so much, brothers and sisters. You guys got to wake up. You got to wake the smash up. One man. I really don't want to use the word smash up for tell you. I want to use the right word. Come on. This thing is getting sick, man. Hmm? Just play next tape there, man. If I say that to you because I'll be just like their truck man. And because you have to submit the invoices. You have to say here is a contract for the, the rig. The government of Ghana then says yes, we can verify that. This costs 30 million US dollars. Then the next question should be, was this competitively sourced? Could we have gotten it for $20 million? Because the going rate at that time was $20 million. Then was it a, 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 a company that is related to, see, the, the oil company? Because if it's a related company, the cost could be inflated that did the rigging, um, the drilling, uh, drilling. These are questions for everything that, that comes up, that the expenditure that is made by the company. At the end of the day, you aggregate all of those and you come up with a figure. And you say, yes, this, are, this is real. Because we've gone through it. We've asked the right question. We've gotten the answers. That is how a government should operate. That is how government should operate. I love it, man. I love it. The man said you have to submit invoices. Here is a contract for the rig you get for 30 million US. You have to verify that. And the next question you should ask is whether we couldn't get it for 20 million instead. <laughs> This man is a very smart businessman. That is the right approach to any business. You must check along to ensure that you get the best price. You do not rent a car for $50,000 a day when you can go to BM suit and pay $6,000 a day. Hmm. You don't just accept a cost for anything blindly like that. Man, you gotta love this man called Jack Dave, eh? Mm -hmm. eh? You see how the man says you do not accept a 30 million rig mm -hmm. when you can do them, when you can get them for 20 million. Mm -hmm. Very smart. The man knows exactly what gotta be done. Hmm. Jack Dave went further, explaining how Guyana can get con by the oil companies. And I love the explanation, Uncle. Yes, I love the explanation he gave. He said, you have to check and make sure that the rig wasn't being rented from anyone that related to the oil company. <laughs> this, man is a, this man is quick to recognize how scampishness can happen. You hear that? This man can teach the world about how 
how you can get can. Like I said many times before, that Vice President Jardil is a very sharp man. He can smell scampishness. Mm -hmm. He can recognize skullduggery a million miles away, more than all of us put together. Yeah, man, that's how smart he is. I wish he would have used his smartness in the opposite direction of what he's doing today. Man, uncle and auntie, I swear Guyana would have already been on top of the world. Glenn Lal would have never had a radio show like this one to talk about issues. Eh -eh. I would have probably been singing some reggae or chutney or Luna Lucy for you people tonight. <laughs> yeah, man. I would have never had... I would have never had this type of a program. Let me explain a little bit more of what he said. At the end of the day, the man said, you aggregate all of that to come up with a figure and say, yes, this is real. This is how a government should operate. Those are his words. Yes. Aggregate uncle and auntie is a big, nice, fancy word. Simply means you take all the inflated bills and the cost and you add it up to get the true total. And you will see how many billions you are being ripped off. That's what he, that's what he means. <laughs> I must say it again. This man knows what he's talking about. He's hitting the nail right, directly on the head. He's right on everything he's saying. But he's not doing nothing, he says. Just accepting everything thrown at us. Yes. What do you call such an individual, may I ask? Huh? More so, what do you call a national leader? An ex-president of a country for 12 years and now responsible for a country's trillion US dollar business. Huh? Who is behaving like this? Like this? What do you call somebody like this man? Miss Harris? Liar. Hmm? Can you, you have another tape? Could you play the tape? His own words. His own words. He hung in himself with. You see why I love today's technology so much? You should love it too, uncle. This is why they're all running from the press and press conferences. Because they leave a trail of evidence that they will have to answer for later. Jack Day doesn't want that because his own words will turn back and bite him like what's going on right now. But I want all of them to know, all the politicians to know, including Bara Jack Day, you can fool some of the people some of the time and you can fool all the people some of the time. But you can't fool all the people all the time, Mr. Jagdeo. Mm -hmm. Abraham Lincoln, a former U.S. president, I think he was the greatest president America had, you said those words. I'm going to take a break this, this evening. I'm going to sh shorten it. But before I end, I just want to play a little tape more for you guys to listen and then I'll call it a night. Play the, the next tape. The pet petroleum sec sector. Um, so I, I seen stuff about us not having a daily, daily report in the newspapers, I think. So there is a daily report from, from Exxon Mobil, the producers to the ministry. I'm going to share with you 
and I hope you can all share this among yourselves, what that report, a sample of it, that the report we get. We, it, it, it shows the amount of oil produced, the water production, waste water and all of that, gas production for the day, the total water to inject that they re-inject and stuff like that, and the gas that is re-injected. So it's a report, a daily report on this that comes into the ministry, and I think it's shared with the EPA. So we, we do have daily reports here. Uncle and Auntie, what he's saying there is untrue. Yesterday we carried a story in which one and a half year almost passed, and not a single report that you heard him promise there just now came out on to this day. Yes. So that is the man you have to put up with. And he promised, he said, his ministry and the EPA gets a daily report on how they are going to put it out. It has been over a year and a half, and we, the, the country has not seen any one of the reports this man talking about. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I wanted to keep back that, that recording to play another night. But I figure you guys need to understand and know what's going on within this man's head and the game that they're playing with our livelihoods and that of our future. Could you play another tape for me? Let's okay, and the reports on this the one daily... Too. And both, both tapes were when they just came into office. Go ahead. Okay, and the reports on the daily production statements from Exxon were not about whether the government is receiving them, but about whether it's being put out to the public, because the AP and UAFC had been giving monthly reports when production started, and this hasn't been happening well, really? in the past few well, months. Well, because it's, it's no secret. I don't understand. They are giving monthly production reports. I see a lot of people now saying what AP and U was doing. I saw a headline about release of awards for contracts and stuff. PVP didn't post it up. But Ashni is saying, we're working on a portal. You're going to see all the information of all the awards and stuff. But I know what they did in the procurement. It was almost zero. So I don't see anything secret about this. In any case, you can almost um, infer the data from the from our share of, of the, if every three months we get like a million barrels, and that is part of, that is 12 and a half percent. You can almost infer it. But I don't see any secret with this not going out. It's, okay. it's, no, it's no big deal. Um, it's just that maybe they have not um, done this. But if, so, so what you should do is you should, um, but every month the media should request it. I'm going to talk to them to ensure that you get it. Monthly, the monthly statements, because we should be able, this is not secret information. This is not secret information. The media can request it every month. <laughs> Uncle and Auntie, nothing is coming out. We have requested the information one and a half year now, almost every month. And they are not sending out anything. You hear what he said? The, month, the reports that are coming out, you can just infer. <laughs> you can just infer what, uh, what you're getting and you'll get an ID. The man is telling you, you must imagine. You must imagine the amount of oil Exxon is selling with what? With what you get in here. Yes, them couple ship load, you must imagine what them get in. He's not putting out that. That's what he's basically saying. You understand? I'm glad, I'm happy that you guys are listening to this man. And this, that, that's another press conference in which he said that, that was last um, early in, in, in January of 2021. We in 2022. And Anthony, now Guyana. Guyana. 
can't get a single report as to the oil production or the cost or look at these reviews. Hmm. Man, Mr. Harris, I got to take a go, a, 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 an early evening. But let me end by telling you guys this. Whatever, whatever you and ExxonMobil them doing against the people of this country, Mr. Jagdeo, the owners of these resources, hmm. the man above, don't sleep. Hmm. He does see everything. And he knows everything. And in his own time, yes, he will deal with all of you guys. Hmm. But for now, I know he is using Glenlal to expose to expose people like Jack Deo and the opposition. Uncle and Auntie, I have nothing else to say tonight, but stay safe, stay alert, stay hopeful. Change will come. God bless all you guys, and good night.